Hi, Blake and Mike here again with another tech tip from DIYHemi.com. And uh, thanks to some viewer uh, feedback, we have a little bit of clarification. We want to go into more depth with some ECMs and uh, really give you guys some opportunities, some options out there for some really cool tricks. So uh, just to kind of recover what we covered in our last video, uh, you have the basic Gen 3 Hemi ECMs. You have the more traditional, the original style, which is the NGC controller with the four individual connectors. Uh, this is really found on your 2003 through 2010 applications, specifically cars. Trucks held on to this a little bit longer, say like 2012. But this is the NGC next generation controller as we covered in our last video. Uh, this is the GPEC-2, so the GPEC-2, which is real common on the newer cars. So you're talking about your 2011, I think it came out with the inaugural edition Challenger with the 392 and is being used today. It's this two, two connector style that you see here. So just to give a direct comparison between these two ECMs, um, if you'll look, the way we like to explain it at DIY Hemi is your gray on the GPEC-2 is going to be your body side functions or your interface with the vehicle itself. And your other connector, if it's a 2011 through a 2014, will be brown, or I guess some people may call it maroon. Uh, this is your engine control. So all your sensors and functions on your engine are being controlled through this connector. The direct correlation with the older NGC ECM is quite simply your first two are very similar to what the gray function does here. So one and three are the same as gray. And then two and four have the same function as the C2 on the newer ECM. Okay, now that we kind of discuss uh, how these two compare to one another, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the GPEC 2 So we'll say goodbye to this guy for now. Okay. What we have here is a 2011 through a 2014 GPEC-2. The first way you can identify it right off the bat is it has a gray and a brown ECM connector, just two, C1 and C2. Uh, what you need to know about this is the 2011 through 2014 have a couple things that are required to run it. One is you're gonna need a starter signal uh, generator. So it's basically a little module that converts a CAN bus code uh, from a key switch. So you turn your key switch, it replicates a CAN bus code and tells the ECM it's okay to start. You're gonna have to run that module. You're gonna have SCIM, Security Key Interface Module, deactivated within the ECM, and then you'll be able to run it. Okay, so that is an option. Don't think that you can't run a 2011 through a 2014 ECM. Now let's discuss moving on. In 2015, they revised the GPEC-2 ECM. And what you'll see then and enable to identify it is a gray and a tan connector. A difference here is there are some pin changes in the way it's laid out in each connector, as well as the ECM itself is now additionally locked from Chrysler. And the only way to unlock it is to physically open the ECM, probe the motherboard, and reflash the bootloader software. You can't do it through a diagnostic port or even connecting directly into one of these connections. It has to be done in order to use a factory 2015 and up ECM. So if we look at it that way, in 2015, it became a little bit more complex. So not only do you have to have it tuned, you have to have skim removed, but you also have to have the ECM unlocked. Caveat to that is in 2015, they also released the Crate ECM with their Crate Engine kits. And you'll identify the same way, it's 2015 and newer because it has the gray and the tan connector, but there are some differences. The differences mainly being it doesn't require the starter interface module, so it doesn't need that kind of that extra module to replicate the starter signal. It doesn't need skim removed, it's already done, it's already deactivated, and it's already able to be tuned. So you're really jumping to the front line of everything. And when you're comparing costs, it's equivalent. So what you're gonna to spend to really condition a 2015 and newer ECM versus just outright buying a crate ECM is very comparable, but it's just much more direct and clear going with the crate ECM. So we highly recommend that in those applications. Now, how does this really benefit you as a Hemi swapper? And how is this tip valuable to you? All this information we've just kind of spit out at you. 
uh, there's some things that we really want you guys to consider out there when you're doing your Hemi swap. So let's say you have a 2014 vehicle. That was your donor vehicle. And it came with this gray and brown connector. Instead of doing a starter signal generator, instead of you know doing the skim removal on this and those costs, what we recommend is you could also go out and buy the crate ECM and do a change. So the difference in the connectors other than the pinouts is the actual connector itself. The colors have a different keyway or a TPA keyway. So if you look here on this area, the color of the connector matches the color of the connector on the ECM. There are little indentations on the side of the TPA or the terminal protective area that really prohibit this gray or tan connector to be pushed into a brown. It just physically won't go. So what we say is there's a solution. What you can do if you have, let's say a harness, I happen to have one here off of a 2013. What you can do is you can change the TPA, the plastic cover to from, from the brown to the tan, reconfigure the pins on it, and then replace this ECM with a crate ECM. Run your engine with a lot less problems, a lot less trouble. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to do that really quickly. So first of all, to remove the TPA, what you're gonna do is get a, maybe a precision screwdriver and pry around the sides. It's not that difficult, but you do want to be gentle. Work a ray around. And ultimately, this guy will just kind of pop off. Okay, there you go. It's just a terminal protective area. It's not that much different. The base of the connector is the same. So what you can do is the same here. Move it around. And what I want you to do at this point in time, because of the pin differences, is you can go on our website under the DIY info link. There's a tab for ECM pinouts and cross-reference. You can go there and see which pins change through the years. And all you have to do is reach into the terminal lock, which there's just a little tab in here that you depress pull the wire out from the back and re-put it in uh, the correct slot needed for the cross-reference. So the guide will show you which pins go where. It's pretty straightforward. So what you'll do is do that, change the pins around from the back side, very easy. When you're done, slap the new TPA on, and then you can directly plug it into the ECM and run the new crate ECM. Let's say you don't really want to run the crate ECM. You have a 2015 and newer, and the crate ECM is on back order, which quite frankly, it happens regularly. The, the crate ECM is on back order. You can't get your hands on it. So what's another option? You can save some money by bumping down instead of a 2015 and newer ECM, going back down to the 2011 through 2014 using the gray and the brown connector and kind of reverse engineering what we just did, you'll probably have the tan connector on yours, on your wiring harness. You would repin both the gray and the tan, you'd repin them, put a brown TPA on it, and then run this one and not have to send the ECM off to be cracked open and have it reflash for the bootloader software and unlocked. So that will save you some money there. So that's the whole premise of this tech tip is really to show you, you have many options when it comes to the ECM and we want to do what's best by you and helping you save money. So we do have these tan connectors available on our website. So you can check in, look at the pinout, see if it's something that you're comfortable with and get these from us. One stop shopping, really don't have to, you know, scour the internet to find where these things are. Um, and that's something we'd be glad to help you with. So if there's anything else related to this, Please drop comments down below the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, let us know how we've been helping you. Thank you.